Hello, happy DIYers and woodworkers. Mayanna here with Heartwood Art, and today we're going to do this super fun wooden jack-o-lantern. It is so easy. This is a great project to do with your kids, and it's a fantastic way to get rid of all that scrap wood you've got laying around the shop, too. Hey, if you're enjoying fun builds like this, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and come on over and visit me at heartwoodart.com for more tips and builds. All right, let's dive in. Now, before you get started with your cuts and build, you'll want to do a little planning for the jack-o'-lantern face. If you have wide wood, like a one by six for the face, then you may want to mount it on top of the sideboards. But if you have more narrow stock, like a one by four, which is what I'm using, then you may want to mount it flush to the sides. This will make the face look wider. Now, whichever way you choose to mount the face, be considerate of where the brad nails and or sideboards will be. You certainly don't want to run into either one of them with your jigsaw blade when cutting the face. Now, ensure that the interior dimensions of your bill will have enough room for the light source you intend to use. Common light sources are tea light candles, battery-operated tea light candles that flicker, a string of LED lights, or a low-watt light bulb. Now, if you're using a real tea light candle, plan your jack-o'-lantern mouth so that it's high enough not to show the flame directly and wide enough to insert a little flame to light it and to blow it out. Okay, now let's cut your boards. Cut the sides of your box to equal length. Mine are 8 inches. I used 1x4 boards for the front and back and 1x3 boards for the sides. Now since I'll be painting this box, it's okay that these are different looking boards. And since this is scrap wood, it's also okay that some of them are cuffed and not in the best condition. That may also make things a little out of square, but that's part of the rustic charm of these things. Okay, let's draw the face. I drew my face on paper first, then cut out a stencil using a stiff file folder, and that may come in super handy if you plan to make several of these. Then I laid that over my face board and traced with a Sharpie. Okay, let's talk about your jigsaw blade type and size. I'm using my Ryobi jigsaw for this project, and it has plenty of power and two different settings for both max speed and type of wood, so I was able to dial it in perfectly for this project, and not having a cord to deal with was fantastic and I chose a Diablo 4-inch blade for fine wood cutting, as they would leave the cleanest edge. You know, it's not so easy to sand fuzz off those interior angles, so a good blade is worth getting. Okay, let's drill the holes. I'll be cutting on the outside of the Sharpie lines, so I drilled holes near to those lines and or close to tight angles. Drill as many as you think you'll need. I used an 11 32nd drill bed, which was just a little wider than my jigsaw blade. Okay, let's build the box. I chose to build my box first so that it would be super simple to clamp the back side of the box while I cut out the face. I used the corner lip on my bench to clamp the bottom back piece into place. Then I used a good wood glue on the side edge. Brad nails at the top and bottom held the side into place while the glue dried. And I love this Ryobi Brad Nailer. Okay, let's clamp to attach our face. Glue up the sides of the face and then place between the sides and use a clamp to hold it until you can get the Brad Nails in. Now my workbench is a little high for this project, so I clamped the back of my box to my workmate. That also made it super easy to walk around all sides to get the proper cutting angle without overreaching or being at an odd angle to the jigsaw. And then sand your cuts. I just folded a piece of 100 grit sandpaper and that made quick work of any rough edges in the holes cut. Okay, now that we have our final box dimensions, it's time to cut the pieces for the top and bottom. I used 1x4s for this and cut them a bit longer than the box for overhang on all sides. I cut mine to six and a half inches. And now let's cut that top handle. I used that same one by four to cut a two inch piece to use as the handle for the top piece. Now we need to cut the interior of the top lid. 
So measure the interior dimensions of the top of your box. And yes, now you can see why all of this wood was scrapped due to its cup. That's fine for this type of project. Next, cut a piece that will fit inside. Now don't try to make it fit too tight. You just want it to be within about a quarter to half an inch on all sides. Its purpose is only to keep the top from sliding around loosely. Okay, now let's attach that interior piece to our top. And here's a tip. An easy way to ensure you properly position that inner piece on the lid is to flip over your top piece and then put the interior piece in the center of that. Then flip your box upside down and place over that interior piece and adjust as needed and then remove the box. Mark that interior piece by drawing a line around the edges. Now remove and glue it to the lid. Then secure it with four brad nails near the corners. Okay, here's the really fun part to finish it as desired. Now, since I'll be spray painting my jack-o'-lantern, I wanted to do that prior to assembly. I use Krylon spray paints. They're under $4 a can in my area, and I got the gloss finish on each. And here's a tip. I taped the outside of the face while I sprayed the box interior black. Then I set it aside to dry. Next, I painted the top and bottom pieces black, and I did both sides of them and leaned them against each other to dry. For the paint handle, I put that on a rock and painted everything green except the bottom of it. I wanted to leave that bare wood so the glue would have a shot at sticking to it when I attached it to the lid later. Next, I removed the tape from the outside face and reattached it to the interior of the face. That would keep the orange paint from going into the black box, yet still allow me to paint the interior of the cuts. Now I did a quick spray across the top edges and I left the bottom edges bare so the glue would help hold them to the base later. Okay, let's attach our base. After allowing the paint to dry for a few hours, it was time to do the final assembly. Flip the box upside down, spread glue along the edges, and then place the base on top of it. Now be sure you put the good side down of that base and then brad nail the base into place. Next, we're going to attach that handle. Now do a test fit of where you want that top green handle and spread glue on the bottom of it and attach. Then put in a couple of brad nails to hold it. Now because there's a piece on the interior part of the lid, you'll have to nail from the top through that handle. But it's not likely those little nails will show in that green paint. And there you have it, your wood jack-o'-lantern. Add your light source to the inside and enjoy. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed making this fun jack-o'-lantern. Please do subscribe to this YouTube channel and come on over and see me at heartwoodart.com for more fun builds. And I'll see you in the shop.